Yakuza Like a Dragon releases today for Steam, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and alongside the two new Xbox Series consoles that are also coming out today. And it's a game I've been patiently waiting for ever since its announcement. For April Fools in early 2019, Sega released a 5-minute video teasing a what-if scenario where the new series protagonist, Ichiban Kasuga, was engaged in a JRPG-styled menu-driven fight as opposed to the usual beat-em-up styled brawling the series had always had. It was pretty elaborate for a joke, and ultimately it became clear that it was actually more of a very clever tease and not actually a joke at all. When it was announced that this game would be completely shifting to becoming a JRPG, and that it would be a direct sequel to Yakuza 6 with a 7 in the title, uh, in Japan at least, it raised a lot of eyebrows and stirred some anxiety and questions in fans. Why completely change the game style for the 7th entry? Why wasn't something like this done with a spin-off like Judgment instead? Why now? Will this even work? Well, I, I can't answer those first three questions as good as they are. But thanks to Sega passing along a PS4 copy of the game to me for free, and from being able to put about 17 hours into it over the weekend, I can confidently answer that last question. Even with those 17 hours, I still feel like I've barely made a dent into the content this game has to offer. I have yet to encounter this game's Mario Kart homage, for example, but I've definitely seen more than enough to comfortably recommend this game and say that, yes. This genre shift does work, and I'm surprised to say that it works better than I expected. Now, I am going to keep playing the game, and I do want to give a more complete review when I'm done with it, so feel free to subscribe or just check back later on if you're interested. But for now, let me give my early impressions and justify my feelings. So, let's tackle it head on right up front. Yakuza Like a Dragon is a JRPG through and through. You'll select combat combos and skills, use healing and harming items, guard and utilize special summons, all from the Sega adorned battle menu. You have a party with multiple characters that all have different stats, spells, and selectable job classes. You'll equip armor and accessories and work toward finding and crafting better weapons, some with elemental buffs and resistances. You can raise or lower attack and defense in battle, you can poison, burn, and paralyze enemies. Make no mistake. This isn't a tepid toe in the water, but a full-on leap into embracing a different style of fight. And while it offers some olive branches to players who like the series just the way it was, dadgummit, by way of quick time event heat moves, timed blocking to nullify some incoming damage, and a definite eye for wacky over-the-top animations, you'll find none of the existing battle structure here. It's kind of surprising just how much they went for it. It extends past the fights, too. Ichiban, the main character, is always finding ways to bring up Square Enix's Dragon Quest and his love for it, comparing real-life situations to basic tenets of the game. There are even retro-sounding jingles for when new characters join the party or when other milestones are completed, and oh, uh, these Dragon Quest-styled character sprites in the loading screen? Yeah, they're adorable. There's a full commitment to the bit here that truly permeates everything. This doesn't just feel like an arbitrary change to freshen things up, but rather it's more akin to a full-on tribute made by those who obviously love the genre for its pros and its quirks. Luckily, even if all of this is a facade and it was somehow just arbitrary, it accomplishes its goal of freshening things up. Now, don't get me wrong, ever since I got into the series with Yakuza 4 back in 2012, I've come to love everything about it and the way it plays. The Yuga Gotoku Studios could easily have just kept making games the way they had, and I'd be there for it each and every time. But even after just a few hours in this game, I found myself kind of relieved that something substantial and recurring enough in this series was pretty different. It's nice to have to approach situations with a different perspective and mindset so often, even if wild encounters can just be mashed through with basic attacks frequently. The game is even taking a few cues from more modern contemporaries like Persona, with characters occasionally dipping in for follow-up attacks and having their own social link-adjacent setup where you can drink with them in a bar and get to know them better through small side stories. It isn't as flashy or grandiose, but it feels just right here. In fact, I was surprised by just how quickly I got used to this shakeup overall. In the lead-up to this game, it was so easy to focus on the JRPG aspect, even if the marketing was pretty shy about showing it off here in the West for a long time. It was so easy to focus on, in fact, that I kind of forgot that there'd be an entire Yakuza game around it. I think it was pretty easy for us all to forget, since this was the most substantial thing, uh, perhaps arguably even more substantial than the entirely new cast. But that's the thing. Even with those two major changes, Everything else you love about Yakuza is still here, and that brings us to the main great aspect of these games. 
They're more about the sum of their parts than the individual aspects, and that's the key that helps keep everything feeling coherent and so familiar in spite of it all. It really wasn't long at all before I wasn't even thinking about the differences. It might even feel a little weird when I go back to play a traditional title in the series after I'm done with this game. The hilarious writing, the deep and affecting characters and story beats, the weird side content, the fun of exploring a Japanese city and stumbling into the game's next oddity, it's all here, and just as great as it's ever been. The collective whole is still intact, and that's why despite what's new here, it still feels incredibly comfortable. And really, a lot of the hooks that are here on the role-playing game side have kind of already been there all along. There were always armor sets to equip, experience to gain, new levels to earn, new moves to learn, stats to increase. People have been comparing those random street brawls to wild encounters from JRPGs for a long time. When you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, this drastic shift really isn't as drastic as it sounds. Of course, this is still an entirely separate field of play that swaps out a lot of intricate finer nuances for other nuances, so those who are immensely passionate about the old way of things won't find those pleasures here. But I think to anyone in that position, Yakuza Like a Dragon does a lot to try and welcome them. It didn't take long for the game to win me over, and I think if you give it a chance, it'll win you over as well. It's sort of like when a food gets swapped out from a yearly holiday meal you look forward to. At first, you're apprehensive since you like the comfort of it always being the same each year. But once you start eating, you realize the new food is pretty good too, and hey, everything else you loved is still there. But again, these are early impressions, the game isn't without its faults, and it has some pretty rough edges at times. The very first time you get control of a character in this game is for one of the series' notorious chase sequences, and that's been the only time I've encountered that so far. It's a weird introduction. On top of that, the game likes to gate story progress behind arbitrary tasks now and then, such as requiring early on that all of your characters have full armor slots and an accessory slot, while you're just barely scraping by for money, and I've heard tale of a very high 3 million yen requirement later on. It isn't an entirely smooth ride, and even in my time with the game, I've already seen quite a few things like this that I think they could iron out in a sequel. But so far, the highest praise I can give Yakuza Like a Dragon is that if there is a sequel that continues building from this new foundation, I'll welcome it. I'm enjoying this new take quite a lot already, and I'm dying to go back and play some more. So I think that's where we'll leave things today. Again, I'll be making a full review that more broadly tackles the game as a whole when I'm done with it, so be sure to stick around and catch that if you enjoyed my impressions here. In short, this game is a great reminder that change isn't always so bad, and that sometimes, change can be more familiar than we expect. I'd like to thank my patrons for their patience this past month, with special thanks to Goldstorm07, Buckles Chucklow, Jeet, The Crazy Even, The Legend of Grooves, Patrick Thompson, Svendelega, Wolf Chaosan, Joey, and Harry. Thank you. <laughs>